Hi, in this tutorial I will show you how you can use for loops in LabVIEW. So here, um, when you are in the LabVIEW environment and in the block diagram where you create your code and you right click on the block diagram you will get this um, palette and then you can select the structures and here on the structures you have different loops and structures. You have for loop, while loop, event structure, case structure, etc. In this tutorial we will use this for loop, so you just drag it to your block diagram and then this for loop will appear and then all uh, the stuff that you are going to execute into the while loop you can just drag it into the uh, sorry into the for loop and then all code that are inside here will be executed as part of the for loop. So let's start with a basic example. Here you see a very basic lab example. Here I have created an, an array with different numbers and this one is put on outside of the for loop which you have here and then inside the for loop uh, I have a numeric indicator and then I wire from the array which is outside through the border and then through this numeric indicator. I have also a wait function here on 1000 milliseconds. So let's create this basic application and let's see what's happening when you create this example and then put this indicator inside the for loop. So we, here I have opened the LabVIEW programming environment. Here I have the front panel, this gray window where you create your graphical user interface. And then this block diagram where you create your uh, code. Basically when you are going to create some elements here on the front panel, you just right click and select whatever you need. And then the same here on the block diagram, you just right click and then you select the different functions that you need to uh, use to create your application. So let's start on the front panel. As mentioned, we are going to create a basic application where we are going to have an array with elements. And then I just here on the data containers, I just selected an empty array and then I can select numeric and then just drag this item inside the array and then we have created an array of numeric uh, values. Then I can just start typing some values here. 3, 5, 6, 8, 12, 15, etc. And then you can create as many values as you want to, but I just create some values to demonstrate the principle. Then I go back to the Go to the block diagram. Here I have the array which is created here. Then next I just right click structure and for loop and just drag it like this. And then I can also right click on the border, select the visible items and label. So now we know this this is a for loop. Then I can wire this array to the border of the for loop like this. So then outside here it will be an array on the inside it will be one on one element by time so then next step i just create a numeric indicator i put it here on the front panel put it there then go back and then wire the output here to the input of the numeric indicator like this in addition typically i want to have a timer um, I use a timer here in this example just to illustrate the principle. So I just select white wait. You right click select visible items label and then right click here on the input create numeric and then I can select let's say um, 3000 sorry 3000 milliseconds or something just to illustrate the principle and now Let's see what's happening when we run this basic application. So here I have the block diagram. Here I have the front panel. Let's run this application now. And then you see it goes into the loop. First it shows 3, 5, 6, 8, 12, and then finally 15. And then after it shows 15, then you see the array has no more values, so these are adjusted. So basically this is the array with 
one, two, three, four, five, six elements, and then in each iteration, we show uh, the next value here in this numeric indicator. So it starts on top, shows three, then five, six, eight, etc. You can also here in the left border we have, if I just right click control H, then uh, you see here a for loop consists of this border, then you have this iteration item, and then let's see when I create another numeric indicator, I can call it iteration, and then wire this to this, and since this is uh, an integer, I can just select, uh, change the data type for this one, I just right click, representation, I select I32, and then I wire this I iteration symbol to this numeric indicator called in iteration. So let's run this applications on application one more time now. So now you see it. 3 is the s zero in iteration, 5 is the uh, number 1, and then you have 2. So this just increases with 1 in each iteration. So it so this iteration starts on zero and then it goes to uh, increase one by one uh, until the number of iterations in the for loop are finished. In this case we have zero, one, two, three, four, and finally five. So this is the iteration, this is the selected number in this iteration. So basically this is how you use a for loop in LabVIEW. So now next assume you have two arrays, I just make a copy of this one, like this, I hold the control uh, key in, in, and then just use the mouse to drag it there, and then make a copy. So now we have array 1, and we have array 2, so then I just change some of these numbers, and then I know I in my application now I just want to perform element-wise addition, so I want to add 3 plus plus 4, and present the value here in this um, answer, and then I want to add 5 and 3, 6 and 6, 8 and 9, etc. So let's see how we can do that. So then I just put both arrays outside in the for loop, I remove this one, and then I just right click here, find this numeric add symbol, and then I put it like this, and then the output should go to answer. And let's see what's happening now when I click the run button. So now 3 plus 4 will be 7, 5 plus 3 will be 8, 6 plus 6 will be 12, 8 plus 9 will be 17, etc. And it goes until 15 plus 13 will be 28 and then this is the final element in the array and then the program will also stop. So this is a basic example how we can use a for loop and, and uh, perform element wise uh, addition, multiplication or creating a formula etc. I can also store all the values inside a new, new array so then basically I can just this is the answer, so then I can just wire it to the border like this, and then just right click here, create an indicator, and then you see a new array has been created, I just put it here, the right side, and then this new array will then store the results from all the answers, so let's run the program once more, 3 plus 4 is 7, 5 plus 3 is 8, 6 plus 6 is 12, etc. And finally, after all the iteration is finished, then it puts all the answers inside this new array we have created here. So then 3 plus 4 is 7, 5 plus 3 is 8, 6 plus 6 is 12, etc. 
So now you see how this uh, for loop is uh, working. You have typically some arrays on the inside and then you can also put an array on the outside and then you can do some calculations inside the for loop like this. One last thing I want to show you is how to use this n um, part of the for loop. So let's just create a new basic application. I just create a new uh, for loop and then inside the for loop I just use this numeric random uh, generator. So this one, sorry, I just right click here, visible items and then if I click Control H, you see this is a function that is part of LabVIEW which you can use to generate some random numbers. So then you can specify an upper bound and a lower bound and then you can specify the data type. So let's assume I want to create a basic temperature simulator or something, then I select double and then upper, upper bound could be, uh, let's say I want to create an indoor temperature sensor that shows temperature value between 30, uh, sorry, between uh, 20 and 30. So then in this case, 30 will be the upper bound and then 20 will be the lower bound like this. So now the output of this function is a number between 20 and 30. And then uh, let's just create a numeric uh, indicator here on the front panel, which could be the, the temperature value. So then temperature, and then I can specify the unit, which is in degrees Celsius, uh, like this. Then I just double click on it and put it inside the for loop here and wire it or the, on the outside of this random generator to this new numeric indicator like this. So this is a very basic program that generates a random number between 20 and 30 and then present the value here in this numeric indicator. And assuming I want to do this 10 times, then I can just right click here on the outside here, go to uh, numeric, select a numeric constant specify 10, wire it to this N sim uh, symbol on the for loop like this. So this means that the while loop will iterate 10 times before the, the for loop is finished. So now let's res just run this basic example. I just hide this one. No, we have this basic example the front panel is just a numeric indicator and here we have the block diagram with a for loop that should go or run or execute 10 times like this. So I can also uh, put in a timer so we see the values in each iteration so then I can just right click select timing wait and then specify some seconds here let's create 2000 or something and then let's run it so now in each every yes, 2000 milliseconds a new value has been generated here by this random generator and presented here in this numeric indicator and after 10 iterations so it goes into loop 10 times then the, the for loop is finished and the program is finished I can also turn on highlight execution if you see here. Then you will see the flow in the program. I can also specify number of decimals here just by right click, display format, select digits of precision, remove this one and just select one decimal because a typically a temperature sensor doesn't have, you don't need to present the value with so many decimals. So one typically one um, decimal is enough. So let's just run it now. You see, now you see the flow in the program. So the first value is 23.86 presented here. 
x value is 27.11 which is presented here and then it goes into this for loop 10 times and in each iteration it the code inside will be executed and a new value here will be generated and presented on the front panel and after 10 iterations uh, the program will stop like this I can also show this uh, iteration so if I create a new numeric here I call it iteration and just wire it and also this since this iteration is uh, an integer I just select the data type to an integer and then wire those two together and then you should see when I run it now iteration zero I just remove this one next iteration one a new value is presented iteration two etc iteration 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and then the loop is finished. So this iteration goes from 0 to 9 in this case since this n or number of iteration is 10. So then the iteration will be from 0 to 9 in this example. So this is basically how you use a for loop. You just go to structures, select the for loop and then you can put some code outside the for loop either on the left side or on the right side and then the, the code that you put inside uh, the for loop will be executed in each iteration like this and basically there are two different ways to use the for loop either you can wire this n and then specify number of iterations that the for loop should uh, be executed or then you can just leave this uh, blank and then make the program automatically specify number of iterations by wiring one or more arrays onto the border of the while loop and then the size of the array will decide number of iterations in the for loop loop automatically so either wire to this n or wire one or more arrays to the border of the while loop and then there will be an auto indexing and the number of iterations will be determined by number of elements in the array like this.